There are a lot of scary stories on the internet. Some of them can be proven, some of them are true, and some of them, well, simply aren't true. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference, especially when you're just reading through threads of stories, but sometimes it doesn't even matter. It captures the imagination and it makes you want to keep reading more and more stories. Today, we're going to be looking at a story that I found on the internet that I found creepy in itself because of multiple reasons. I'll read the story and then I'll break it down and I'll give my comments and what I think is going on or what has happened or what could have possibly happened. It reads, the scariest thing was an annual camp out my search and rescue team does every fall. It's a retreat and we do some training and just hang out and bond as a team. Well, we were doing night training and my dog, who was trained for cadaver and man trailing at the time, alerted to a scent. So we follow it deep into the darkness. We got to a slick, I guess, a, a creek bed and I had a terrible fall. I slid to a small cliff and off of it, broke two ribs and concussed. I pressed the emergency alert on my GPS that signals base camp when we are either lost or have found the target and need assistance bringing them out. Well, my dog vanishes on me and I hear footsteps a time later and a super creepy random guy starts talking to me. Talks about how often people end up in the creek. How often people die because of the sudden flood during hurricane season or tornado season. Just something really off about the dude. He started to look for a safe way down into the creek. Mind you, I'm barely able to breathe, let alone put up much of a fight. Then I hear it. My dog is part Aussie, and Aussie talks at us to communicate. It's a series of trills, a woos, roll to roos, and different barks. The guy looks off towards the noise and seems to decide to not come down to where I was. I see one of our team's other dogs first, a massive German Shepherd. He's one of the softest, most sensitive dogs I know, and he immediately goes, hackles up, teeth bared, growling, and threat display barking at the stranger. Dude backs up away from the ranger and Brody. My dog appears and immediately does the same. Maybe five steps later are two of my team members. One was a former marine officer and the other guy did MMA professionally. The guy just stares as they try to extract me from the creek. The dogs continued to escalate their threat noises at the guy. He watched the entire time my teammates stabilized me and called for the backboard and the wheelie, which is an ATV wheel with a welded frame that the backboard can attach to. They wheeled me down to camp and our medical people cleared my neck, though still went to a very rural hospital. According to one of the nurses, the area we were working had a high number of assaults, both physical and sexual. I fully believe to this day that that would have been my fate if Ranger hadn't shown up when he did. Still involved in SAR and have a lot of weird stories from searches, but nothing quite as disturbing as the man that night. Brody is long since retired and Ranger is nearing that age too. To this day, I don't know what scent Brody was following because the training wasn't set up the direction we ended up. We did file a suspicious activity report with the police, but nothing came of it that I'm aware of. When you're already in the middle of nowhere, you're camping out, and your dog is specially trained for searching for cadavers and just trailing and finding people, you already know you're in for something. But the fact that your dog just booked it, I mean, he was on the set. 
I mean, he must have just believed you're with him. But it is kind of sad that your dog didn't stick with you in that moment. But the thing is that this guy just came up out of nowhere. It's like he was expecting something to happen. Because apparently he's aware of what happens in this area. People drowning, dying, slipping down there often enough that he has accounts of it and knows of it. That the people that are camping here on an annual camp on an annual camp had no idea that this was happening. And then the guy just stands there knowing that you're hurt. Because you can tell once you're hurt, you're laying there, you're not getting up. He knew that he had, I guess, the perfect circumstances to do whatever he was going to do. And that's evil. Because he sat there and he talked to you and then he tried finding the way down, but he didn't show any signs of wanting to show comfort or worry. It was like he was setting up like... You know, like villains do this monologue. He was kind of setting up his own like little monologue, if you will. And he was going to do something devious, is what I can guess. Because the other large part of this is dogs tend to know... They can tell if they can trust a person a lot of the times. And I'm not saying that every dog that barks at you thinks you're a bad person or whatever. Some dogs are just protective of whatever is going on. But for this dog that is known to be just like a gentle, loving dog, to come up and immediately see you as a threat, and then for the other dog to also come up and see you as a threat, shows that there's something to this person's character that the dogs sniffed out that they knew something was going on and they didn't trust him and they probably shouldn't have based on his actions and just the general way he was talking to this person that was injured and she said I fully believe to this day that her fate would have been bad if the dogs and the rescue team didn't come when they did if imagine if they didn't come for 5, 10, 15 minutes. What could have happened? I mean, chances are he wasn't going to be able to pull her very far. But, even if a half hour went by, you never know what would happen. It's, it's kind of scary that these situations find people in the most random situations. And that there's people like that that exist that prey on people because they know that they have the perfect setup to do something evil. 